Hey team, I wanted to make another video. I keep telling you I was gonna make a video on I said yes, now what? Uh, and so I'm gonna share some stuff with you. Um, I've, for, for those of you that don't know me, uh, I've been in network marketing since 2004. Um, I am not the best network marketing person out there, uh, but I have been in it for years. I earned a, a car with a specific company and I've earned thousands of dollars in bonuses in other companies. And so um, when it comes to network marketing, there are basics that are always the same. You could go to Barnes and Noble right now and pull 10 network marketing books off of the shelf and you're gonna find the same building blocks for each business. Uh, what it comes down to in general is you and numbers, okay? And so um, I'm gonna help you a little bit with that today, but I'm gonna explain to you um, some of the things that you need to do once you've officially made the decision to do this business, okay? So I'm gonna give you some steps and I'm gonna break it down for you. Once you have an ID number and you've decided that you are wanting to make some money with Young Living, the very first thing you need to do is to get on Essential Rewards. And let me tell you why you need to do that. To get your commission check with Young Living, you need to have had $100 of your own purchases. A way of uh, visualizing that is it's like you've... Uh, punched your time card at Walmart. It's basically saying you are shopping at your own grocery store or your own store and it's showing Young Living you're doing your part, that you're not just going out and finding people and then sitting around and waiting for them to do all the work for you, okay? Now, a reason uh, I suggest that you get on ER and set it for 100 PV, so this is PV, not dollars, is because I'm gonna let you learn from a lesson I, I learned the hard way. Uh, in the company I had been with before, I actually had earned um, a car. And I was so busy during that month earning the car that they too had a $100 minimum that you had to put in under your ID number to get your own check. And I had been so busy working with team and so busy trying to reach this goal of getting the car that I had forgot to place an order. And come to find out at the end of the month, um, I hadn't placed a $100 order and they called me and said, we're gonna give you a one-time opportunity to go ahead and put that order in or I would have missed out on a $10,000 check, okay? So learn from my mistakes. Um, that company did not have to do that and I can't guarantee you that Young Living would do that. But what I can tell you is that if you just automatically set up your essential rewards for 100 PV every single month, no matter how busy you get or how crazy life gets, you don't ever have to worry about that. It's just in there. I do want to suggest, though, that things do go on um, uh, back order or out of stock. And so the day before your order should go out, always check it and make sure that the stuff you put in there is still in there. Okay, so it's the first thing that you need to do. Second thing that's a must in this business is a hundred people list. This is a must. This is everyone you know. Some of you are already saying to yourself, I don't know a hundred people, okay? Um, you do know a hundred people. You have people that you see every single day at the same gas station that you go to or Starbucks that you go to. Uh, even the post office when you're mailing products, you see the same post office lady every single day but you also have college friends, high school friends. And um, when I was doing the business prior in 2004 and five, uh, Facebook didn't exist. So all of you I know have 100 friends. Your network marketing is so much bigger than before. Uh, the possibilities are huge. And so what you need to do is you need to sit down and you need to write down 100 people. What you'll find in making this list is that you'll kind of start categorizing them between warm market and those that you kind of know. And the warm market is typically your family, your friends, your closest friends from high school and college, um, your coworkers if you work, uh, and your, uh, your friends' parents. I'm sorry, your kids' friends' parents. 
And then you'll get into like the acquaintance area, which is people from high school that you don't really talk to or uh, people that you see occasionally. Um, a really good example of that is let's say that you have a job where when you walk in every single morning to work, there's uh, two guards or uh, people sitting at a front desk and you have to show them your badge. Those are two people that should go on your list because those two people will see you every single day. And if something about you changes, let's say you lose weight, let's say your rosacea goes away, um, or you all of a sudden are pulling up in a really expensive car, you're wearing a better clothes and a better purse, they're gonna notice a change in you. And so they become somebody who's on your 100 people list. Never discredit anybody, and I'll give you an example of that. Um, and I have a list for you that I can send out just uh, memory prompters, but I went to the post office all the time to give products and I would have never put my post office lady on there. But what happened was I continued to mail packages out and so she was asking me, are they fragile, are they liquid, are they hazardous? And I would say they're liquid and they're fragile. And eventually she asked me what it was and I told her and she signed up, she still uses the products, we're friends on Facebook today. And I would have never put the post office lady, but that's just an example of never just discount anyone. Another thing about your 100 people list is don't prejudge, okay? So when you go into your people list, you're going to find that you categorize them into people categories. But after you do that, I want you to do three things. You're gonna have three categories. One is users, hostesses, and business builders, okay? And so what you'll do, this is my suggestion when you're making your list, if you put, let's say, Kim Smith next to her name, if you think, oh, she's totally gonna be a user, then you'll put a P for product, and then next to that, you know she'd be a hostess, and then next to that, if you think she'd be a business builder, put BB next to business builder, and do this on each of them. There are honestly going to be people on your list that um, won't ever host for you, and you'll know that. And there are people who will never be a business builder in your mind, and so you won't put that. But you never know, okay? But you will be able to kind of categorize those, and this list will help you in a minute. All right. The third thing that you want to do after you do your 100 people list, because once you do this, then you can do the rest. If you don't do this, you can't do the rest. And so the next step is set a launch date. Now, what is a launch? A launch is anywhere from a minimum of two, if not three classes, okay? Why do we do this? The number one reason is you're being taught what to do. Mentally, you are gonna retain so much better if you see a class backed by another class, backed by another class. My personal suggestion, which is what's worked for me for years, is to do three classes. Don't start with two, do three. Um, another reason for doing three classes is that I do it, then we do it, and then you do it, okay? And so this is me teaching it, then we co-teach it, and then you teach it because you're now comfortable. Another reason for doing three classes back to back is because all your stuff is set out, everything's there, you clean your house one week or one weekend and it's done. Another reason is that if you have, let's say, three classes back to back and you have all this volume from your classes, so uh, I usually suggest like a Friday night and two on Saturday, or you can do Friday night, Saturday, and a Sunday. Uh, do not, whatever you do, do not say to yourself, I need to ask around and see who can come to my class. Because this is what I say to that. When you got engaged and you set your wedding date, did you call everybody and ask them if they could or couldn't come and what date? No, because it's not about them. It's about you. So you set a launch date that fits you, fits your family. Um, I prefer the beginning of the month because then that gives you the rest of the month to host other classes from your guests, but it does not matter. Just get it on the books, okay? But don't go asking everybody what works for them because inevitably you're going to ask and then they're going to get sick or something. It's not about them. It's about what works for you. So you have these three, four classes back to back. We have all this volume. Well, there's this thing in Young Living where if you haven't watched my other video, it's about how you build your business to best benefit you for volume and compensation plan. Well, 
one of the things about that is that if you have all this volume, I can show you how to work with all those people because in Young Living, there's a five day policy, okay? And what that means is when you put somebody in the system, you have five days where you can move them to where you need to do them uh, by using live chat. And then anything after the five days, it takes an email and it's a little more complicated. So if you have a class on Friday and two on Saturday, then we can sit down Saturday night and look at what you have and get it done Saturday or Sunday. But if you have a class on Monday and then another one on Thursday and then another one the next week on a Tuesday, you see that we, it's harder for us to see who needs to go where and what the volume is. So when you are launching or you're launching someone, uh, the best scenario for you is to do three classes back to back. Okay. Now, once you've decided who your 100 people are, then you can decide who's going to get invited. Well, my personal opinion is invite everybody. If they live 100 miles away, 1,000 miles away, or a minute away, they get invited. And let me tell you why. Um, one, you don't ever want to prejudge anybody because you don't know their situation. Okay, you don't know that everyone's telling you their ailments because a lot of people don't. A lot of people will get diagnosed with something and they keep it secret for a long time. Second is most people do not um, share their financial situations with other people. So you don't know where they are business wise either. Uh, third of all, just because they're far away does not mean that they cannot be taught because you can actually Skype people, okay? And I've done plenty of Skype. I've launched people on Skype and I've just done classes with Skype. That's something that once again is gonna propel your business in 2014 that people could not do in 2005, okay? So once you've got your 100 people list and your launch date, then you're gonna send out invitations. Now, I suggest that you do Evite you do Facebook events, host, and you're going to email. There are actually also people, I would suggest you do snail mail, okay? And you'll know those people. Um, grandma's grandpa's, um, people who are just not on the computer. Uh, but you are going to use several, if not all of these media forms to send out an invite to your launch event, okay? Um, this is how you're gonna get the word out. This is another reason for keeping the classes condensed because if you can send out an event, like an evite or an event, that's a little bit trickier on the event, but an email for sure or a post, you can say, come here, here, here. Now, here's the cool thing about doing three classes. You have a class, let's say on Friday, and somebody doesn't wanna come, they can be like, oh, sorry, I can't come, we have plans. But if you have a class on Friday night and two on Saturday, or Thursday night, Friday night, and one on Saturday, it's a little bit more difficult for people to pull the whole, oh, I'm busy, okay? Because at some point, it's gonna look like they're lying to you. So if you have three different time slots, it allows more people the availability to come to your classes. Um, even if they don't want to, sometimes they kind of get guilted into doing it because they know they should go and they just can't weasel their way out. But that's very few people do that. Uh, but this is just very much easier for them to say, okay, I can't Saturday morning, but I can on Sunday um, or whatever. So I do personally suggest, like I said, a Friday night, two on Saturday and a Sunday afternoon, two o'clock. Those work really, really well. Okay. Once you've decided that you're going to do these things and you're sending out the evite, one of the things that you have to have figured out is your why. Now, I'm going to go into this here, uh, but this is more about the business and you'll hear me talk about it later. But when you do a network marketing business, you have to have a why, okay? And that why has got to be bigger than the biggest no you will ever get. And let me tell you, when you start a business and you go straight to your mom or your sister or your best friend and they full on tell you no, it's devastating. It is way more devastating to get a no or for them to act, uh, act like they could care less or that they think you're crazy than um, you telling a coworker because the value of their opinion is less, okay? So if your 
Y is not huge. If it is not bigger than your biggest no, okay? So it needs to be bigger than biggest no, okay? And what I mean by that is if your mom says no to you and tells you you're crazy and she thinks that you need to stop doing this right away, your why has got to keep you in this business, okay? So uh, when I got, for me, network marketing on a personal level um, is gonna be different than anyone else, um, but my why is broken down into what I need it to mean for my family, what I need it to mean for right now, and what I need it to mean for long term, okay? Um, so figure this out. And another rule is it should make you cry, okay? Now, here's the thing. Some people will tell me I'm not a crier. I get that, I totally get that. But if it doesn't tug at your heart, then it's not the right why, okay? So you've got to work on this. Well, why do you have to have a why? Well, one, because the minute you get a no, and I'm telling you, you are gonna ask your mom, you're gonna ask your closest friends and your closest family members first. That's who you're gonna tell first because they're your warm market. You're comfortable with them, okay? You're gonna tell them what you've decided to do and please come and they will tell you no. And you will instantly think, what have I done, okay? Now, um, we have a thing in network marketing that we call the, um, without, we actually use the cuss word, but I won't say it, but it's the oh crap moment, okay? You will have that somewhere within the first two weeks of your business. Message me when you have it, okay? But it's this oh crap, what did I get into moment? And you'll have it. And once again, this needs to be there, okay? And when you have it, you are gonna crack up because you're gonna be like, this is the minute Tage was talking about. It's that minute when you're like, what did I get myself into? What was I thinking? I can't do this. Whatever it is, the lie that's telling you, uh, but you will have it, okay? It's usually within your first two weeks. Um, so figure out your why, and if you need help with that, I can help you with that as well, but ultimately it comes down to you. Okay, so once you've done this, now you're going to go, you've already sent out your emails, you've figured out your why, so you can share with people, you've got your 100 people list that you've categorized, now you're going to call these people, okay? Yes, I said call. Now, this is where we lose everyone, right here. I did not say personal message everybody, you're going to do that too. I did not say text that person. I did not say show up at their door. I said call that person. Even if you leave a personal message, a voicemail message, what you're going to do is you are going to remind them about the class. Okay, then you're going to offer a one-on-one -on -one with them if they cannot come to the class. So. They've already got three options or four options, depending upon you, what you choose. If they can't make it here, then now they can't get it out of the one-on-one, -on -one, okay? But you're offering this. You're, you're reminding them of the class. That's your reason. That's going to help you because a lot of times people are afraid of the phone and you're calling and reminding them of the class and then you're going to offer them the one-on-one, -on -one, even if they haven't said yes or no at that point. If it's somebody far away, then you're going to offer to Skype with them. And here's my suggestion on that. You will have friends that live far away that are interested. You're going to send them a care package, and I can go into this in a different uh, video, but you're going to send them a little care package. If they already do not have the everyday kit, okay, if they have the everyday kit, you're set. But if they don't have it, you're going to send them the little two Dremel vials of each oil and um, one or two catalogs and some other information that we can talk about in another video. Um, because while you're Skyping, the key to your class is passing around the oil for them to smell it or try it, right? So if they've got the everyday kit and they haven't used it all, then you're set. You can Skype a class today um, because they're just gonna set their own oils out and you can email them any kind of forms that you need, like the sign up forms. Um, it is so simple. But if they don't have the kit that yet and they're trying to earn it or whatever, then you're gonna send them the little two Dremel uh, vials, okay? So this is a scenario on how you're gonna get started. Now let me tell you just a few things on network marketing about the business. Um, 
I'm literally cramming what could be an entire weekend retreat, okay? I mean, and trust me, I've taught on this for years, and I'm not going to go into great detail, and I'm skipping a lot, but this is stuff you need to understand at the very beginning of your business, along with there's more details about that stuff, but um, when it comes to the business, network marketing business, okay, there is simple rules that you have to understand. And these are things I was talking about. If you went and got a, a MLM book or a direct sales book, all of the foundations are the same. Um, pretty much it, they run the same, they work the same. One of the biggest things is numbers. You can't have sales without numbers. You can't have business builders without numbers. It's numbers, it comes down to numbers. And so your job is people, finding people, talking to people, setting up classes with people, that's it. And one of the things that I find in here, and I'm gonna talk about this in a minute, um, is thinking, okay? So we're gonna to get to that in a second. What I wanna to explain to you about network marketing is this. If you play, this is usually the word I use, if you play consultant or you play Young Living Business, it's a hobby and it is going to cost you money. Bottom line, that is just how it is, okay? There's no way around it. If you treat it, if you play with it and you treat it like a hobby, it's gonna cost you. If you work it part-time, you're gonna make part-time money. I mean, it's part-time money. If you work it full-time, you're gonna make full-time money. That is the rules. There's no way around it. People talk about how simple network marketing is because what part-time and full-time work look like in network marketing is completely different than corporate, corporate world, okay? So one of the biggest problems that I find with people is that they think about the business a lot. They constantly think about it. They think about who they need to call, what they need to do, who they need to email, what flyer they should make, what oil they should get, what class they should have. They're constantly thinking about it and they're exhausted. And then they'll come tell me, I'm not making any money. Well, you have not done any activity. There's been no revenue producing activity in thinking about your business. So you have to catch yourself because that's when it becomes a hobby. You're playing consultant. You're thinking about it. You're imagining it. You're exhausted because you wake up thinking about your business and you go to bed thinking about your business. But you have not put one foot in front of the other when it comes to revenue producing activity. Well, guess what revenue producing activity is? It's calling, asking for classes, doing classes, doing one-on-ones, and Skyping classes. That's it. It's a numbers game. Bottom line, numbers game, okay? So be real careful when you think to yourself that this business is too hard or that it doesn't work. You need to evaluate, have you been thinking about it a lot or have you actually put any effort, like foot in front of the other activity, revenue producing activity into your business? Well, in this business, the reason only 5% of the population ever make it to the top of network marketing is this right here, okay? And that is because at the beginning of your business, it is the hardest time you'll ever have because you're learning, you're learning how to do the business, you're learning about how to do classes, products, but ultimately you're learning who you are. Are you a good salesperson or are you not? Are you a good follow-upper? Do you call? Um, do you close a sale? It's all you, okay? So this is really hard. This learning curve is hard. But at the same time, you're working really hard and your check's not that big. Now I will say this about Young Living, something they do that most network marketing companies do not do, and that is that they have the fast start bonus, okay? So the thing about the fast start bonus is that when you get new people, you're making 25% commission and bonuses off those people. So in all honesty, your checks are a lot bigger here than in other network marketing companies, okay? But it's still a lot of work. And there is a lot of thinking involved because you're trying to figure out who did I call, who did I text, who did I message. And I will, I will say this, um, I didn't have all the media that we had before when I w was successful in the other company. It was just emails and phone calls. It was so much easier than it is now because I, one of the hardest parts is remembering who texted you. Was it a text or 
was it a message on Facebook or was it a post or you just can't remember where everything is. So that does make it a little more difficult, but at the same time, it's a bonus, okay? So at the beginning, you're learning who you are, you're learning about the business, but you don't make a lot of money. It's a teeny little bit of money, okay? Um, you do make it with Fast Start Bonus, but it, it, sometimes you feel like you're exhausted, you're eating it, sleeping it, drinking it, dreaming it, and your checks don't match it. Then all of a sudden, it just becomes a little bit hard, but it's not the hardest part. It's just you're still learning, okay? But now you have people you're leading, so you've become a leader. So what happens here is the reason it's not easy yet is because, yes, the learning curve is gone. That, that's easier. But now you're becoming a leader, and now you're learning what kind of a leader you are. Can, do you micromanage? Um, do you, uh, are you complimentary or what kind of leader are you? Are you running your people off or are you leaving them behind? And so, um, that is a very difficult learning curve as well, but easy and doable. But here you make quite a bit more money. Okay. Because it's not just you anymore. And so there's this toss up where you're still like, oh, I'm having to work a lot, but I see it coming into my check more than before. Then there's a shift and it's where it becomes easy because now you have leaders in your team, right? So now you have more people working. You know what you're doing at this point. You've become silver. Um, so you know what you're doing. You know what kind of a business builder you are and leader that you are. You now have leaders who are helping you make money. And so you're making good money at this point. And within this scenario is where you, it kind of fluctuates. It's, it's the biggest gap per se in going from a thousand dollars a month to 10,000 a month. And then eventually this is what we call living on the beach. Okay. And I'm not a fan of that term, but it's what you'll hear in network marketing books and speeches and people talk about it all the time. This is where you make so much money and you're not really doing anything. Um, and so, uh, this is where only 5% of the people get, and that's okay because in this category right here, people retire their husbands. I mean, this, this is great right here. Okay. This is literally where you, you pay off debt. Um, you send your kids to college because this range is so big. If your dream is to get here. Um, where the money is gargantuan and you actually do feel guilty because you're doing very little and making unbelievable money like 50 to 150,000 a month um, then you can do this anybody can do this you just have to make sure you're the five percent and that's why going to trainings and conferences and watching videos like this will help you get there because you cannot get here by yourself ever 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 you have to master the business you have to master becoming a leader and then you have to master bringing up leaders. That's it. That's the only way you can get there. Okay. Now in this business, in this process, you are your worst enemy. And what do I mean by that? All of your fears about yourself are going to be exposed. They will, you will become a better person or you'll stay the other person because you quit. That's just the scenario. Um, and the best of you will be brought out as well because you'll find out what you're good at. It's not all negative but one comes with the other. And so this is a very exciting process, but at the same time, it's a difficult process. And what I mean by your worst enemy is that when we grow up, we are taught that to get up at this time, go to school, get out, do homework, go to bed. Then we get to college and it's structured. Then we get out of college and it's structured job hours, okay? Well, that's not how our network marketing is gonna work for you. You're home and if you choose instead of calling your people to take switch out the laundry take out the trash do the dishes go get coffee for yourself if you spend your time not preparing during the day like you should even if you decide it's part-time versus full-time it's become a hobby because you spend time thinking about it while you run around and do laundry and all that other stuff but a part-time job would require you showing up for so many hours. A full-time job requires you showing up for so many hours. That's just how it works. And so um, you will have to figure out what you are in this business. This is a learning curve. Do you spend your time wisely? 
Are you on Facebook more than you are on the business? Do you, I mean, the Facebook will become your business, but I'm saying scrolling versus posting, okay? So choose chunks of time if you can. It's not that cut and dry, I'll be honest. You can't just say that I'm only gonna take phone calls from here to here because people's lives are all over the place. And so you, but there are times you can say, my kids, I homeschool them from here to here. I'm not gonna look at anything. I'm not gonna call. I'm not gonna pick up the phone. I'm doing nothing between here and here. But make sure that the rest of the time you are getting your stuff done. Okay, also, my big suggestion for you is that you give network marketing, whatever your choice is, but specifically, um, we're talking Young Living, a year. And the reason that I say give it a year is because um, several reasons. One, there's fluctuations in businesses like this in sales. So with us, it would be flu season, school season, summer season. You'll have seasons where sales are huge and then they kind of die down. That's just how it is. And you don't want to quit right before one of the big sales seasons. Okay. Another thing is, is that what you do today, today's efforts will show up six months from now in your check, okay? The classes that you do today, the people you talk to today, this month, yes, you'll make some volume off of them, but in six months, the residual part shows up. Um, you can't see that on the thing, sorry. Um, just remember that it's the people you teach today, it's in six months that they've used oils for six months and have testimonies and are now finding people, or they choose to do the business, or they're buying more oils at this point because they've been using them and they've run out of their kit or whatever. So in your mind, if you can remember what I do today, the activity I have today, I'm gonna see in six months residual income. You'll have right now a fast start bonus, but we're talking long-term momentum in your business, okay? Uh, when it comes to launching though, you want to launch and focus on your business. When you launch for three months. Okay. Now the reason it's called a launch is because that's what it is. You're going, you're literally launching your business. You're focusing on the three to four classes and you are telling everyone, you know, at one time. You're telling every family member, every friend, everyone on Facebook, this is what I've decided to do. You've dedicated this time to tell them all about it. Um, you're going to also make it personal. That's another thing I didn't talk about here is that when you start sending out the invites here, one of the things you want to do is make it personal. Send a message to somebody and say, I really wanted you to come to this because... I know your son has asthma. I know you deal with eczema. I know that you have food allergies. Make that part personal to them. So you're gonna send it out, but you're actually going to personally invite people and make it personal to them so that they understand why you're inviting them. That's not just this blast invite, okay? And so the launch part of it is that now you've contacted everyone you can on your 100 people list. You've had your three classes. Now we're setting you up to be perfect in your organization from all the sales and volume that you got. 